Hi everyone, and welcome to our webinar on device sampling during the Ananas audit. My name is Florian torse Bonfillou. I'm the Technical Department Director here at GMED North America. I'm sure that at this point you all have heard about Ananas audit that Notify Bodies have started to perform last year. Well, one part of these Ananas audit requirements is the device sampling and testing. This webinar has been created to present you the requirements as well as the tools published on the topic to help the implementation and help you identify what to expect during your announce audit. The webinar that you're hearing and watching has been pre-recorded. However, we are here watching the webinar and the chat box to answer questions both as you ask them as well as after the webinar recording has ended is open. Please feel free to write your questions into the chat box or the Q&A box that you see on your screen. If we don't get to your question, then we'll respond in about a week. If you have a specific question that is particular to your situation, please email your certification project manager instead of writing your question in the chat box so that we can put the time into answering you appropriately. And with that, let's get started. So we will split this webinar in two main sections. The regulatory context, which would include the three medical device directives, the recommendation 2013-473 EU, and a draft of a guidance document published by Team NB in October 2013. Then we will give you an notified body perspective on the topic covering which devices are considered, how many, and which tests will be performed, and by whom. The main documents on the regulatory context are the directives in use today. The 9342 EEC Directive for General Devices, the 9385 EC Directive for Active Implantable Devices, and the 9879 EC Directive for IVDs. In each of these directives, there are provisions related to the unannounced audit and or device testing. For example, in the Directive 9342 EC, in Annex 2, Section 5.4, in Annex 5, Section 4.4, and in Annex 6, Section 4.4, it states that the notify body may pay an announced visit to the manufacturer. And at the time as such visit, the notify body may, where necessary, carry out or ask for tests in order to check that the quality system is working properly. So this provision has been in the regulation for a while now, so one could wonder what is new, what has really changed. So what has changed is the publication of the recommendation 2013-473 EU in September 2013, which made the Ananas audit systematic. Ananas audits are coming in addition of the ones from the existing certification cycle. And these rules apply to all notified bodies as well as all device manufacturers who see mark their devices, except for the self-certified one. In addition to manufacturers, their critical subcontractors and crucial suppliers can be subject to an announced audit. An announced audit are performed at least once per certification cycle. This frequency can be increased if one or more devices are usually found non-compliant, if the company has compliant issues, or if the company manufactures high-risk devices such class 3 or list A devices. The duration of these audits is at least one day on site with a minimum of two auditors. The duration is adjusted based on the company size, the activities and the number of devices. The scope will cover devices covered by manufacturer's CE certificate.
After this remind us about an announced audit, let's focus on a specific part of it, the sampling and testing of medical devices. In the Recommendation 2013-473 EU, two sections are talking about product sampling and testing. And those sections are in the Annex 3 of the Recommendation. First, the sec Section 3. It describes what should be implemented for all class of devices and all directives. Notify bodies have to sample recently produced medical device or devices and verify its conformity with the technical documentation and with legal requirements. Under this section, testing could be performed if it is deemed necessary to confirm conformity of the device. Section 4 focuses on devices for which assessment includes EC type or design examination. So we are talking here about higher risk class, such as active implantable devices, class 3 and list A devices, and some of the class 2B and list B devices. The sampling for these devices is different, and the recommendation requires a sampling of at least three different device types for manufacturer with less than 99 types, and to add one sample per 100 device types. The intent is the same as for the Section 3, which is to verify the conformity of these devices with the technical documentation and legal requirements. For these categories of devices, sample testing is mandatory. And this is the main difference between these two sections. For lower risk medical devices, we may perform testing. For higher risk classes, we will perform testing. We will tell you more about how it is to be performed in the coming slides. So we will now talk about the Notify Body perspective regarding this topic. And for that, before going in more details about the sampling, we'd like to have a few words about the Code of Conduct. The Code of Conduct is a document built by and for Notify Bodies with the intent of harmonizing practices. The goal is to reduce the gap between notified bodies' interpretations and practices. In the Code of Conduct of July 2014, there are provisions related to unannounced audits and product sampling as tools to verify product conformity. First, there is a reminder about the purpose of an unannounced audit, as the unannounced audit are product-focused audit. And then there is a mention of product testing with, apart from auditing documentation, the notified body shall also, where possible, witness selected tests to verify test data fall within the specifications. So now, let's focus on the device sampling for testing purposes. For the recommendation, device sampling for testing purpose will occur every time for high-risk devices. This is what is described in the section 4 of Annex 3, and only when necessary for all other CMARC devices, except if it is self-certified. To these rules, we must add some circumstances that could trigger sampling and testing of the devices. For example, if one or several devices is or are identified non-compliant, and or because of information received uh, from the authorities. The number of devices to be sampled is only described for the high-risk devices in Section 4 of the Annex 3 of the recommendation. For these devices, devices from at least three different device types should be sampled, with one additional per 100 types. But what is a device type? This question remains open today as the regulation doesn't describe what a device type is. The sampling procedure should be defined in advance by the notify body. The auditor will show up for your unannounced audit will have clear instruction on how to perform the device sampling. 
The goal of performing testing during an announced audit is to challenge the device safety and performances with regard to the specifications issued by the manufacturer and presented in the technical documentation of the device subject to testing. And it is also to challenge the device safety and performances with regard to the regulation. The test would be performed according to the testing procedure defined by the manufacturer. These procedures may have been previously challenged during audits and or technical documentation evaluation. And these procedures will need to be submitted to the notified body for the purpose of testing. One major question is who will be performing this test? And to answer it, a draft guidance document has been issued by Team NB in October 2014. This guidance document describes the different options and includes preferred and alternative options. The test could be performed either by the manufacturer being witnessed by the notify body or by a noti notify body test engineer when the notify body has the capacity to perform this test or by a third party laboratory. Similarly, the testing can occur either at the manufacturer's premises or at the critical subcontractor or at the notify body or third party laboratory. In all cases, the subject of the testing can be the device or a part of it, from the critical component down, down to a raw material. As you have seen in the previous table, priority is given to witness testing by the notify body at the manufacturer site. This is to minimize the sampling for outside testing as this also will trigger additional challenges, including preservation of devices. However, if this option is not sufficient or if the manufacturer couldn't demonstrate the product conformity, then the testing could be performed by and at the notify body or by and or at a third party laboratory. And in this case, again, the sampling procedure would have been defined prior to the audit. So, to conclude on this topic, there is no requirement in the regulation that is really new. The main items that have been added are that an announced audit becomes systematic, and so is the device sampling and testing for some device categories. Also, the two main points to keep in mind are that the sampling procedure is to be defined by the notify body and that the testing procedures are the ones defined by the manufacturer. The main goal of those announced audits and device sampling and testing is to verify the device conformity with its technical documentation and legal requirements. And we are about done with our webinar now. Today we've gone through some introductory information about the requirements behind the device sampling during an announced audit. We hope that you found the webinar informative and helpful, and that we've answered a lot of your questions. The chat box or the Q&A box that you see on your screen will remain open for 10-15 minutes. So feel free to type any additional questions you may have. If you have more later on, you can send us an email at the address you see on your screen or to your certification project manager, and we will respond in the coming days. Thank you very much for joining us today.